Welcome to the Delaware Scrub. This property was purchased in May 2005 with a combination of funding from the Town of Jupiter Open Space Bond Referendum as well as two different grants, one from Florida Community Trust and also the Loxahatchee River Preserve Initiative. This property is just under 16 acres and is now currently managed by Palm Beach County. There are four different ecosystems, pine flatwoods, Florida scrub, mangrove swamp, and a cypress swamp. There's parking here. There's an accessible walking trail with a boardwalk that terminates at an observation platform overlooking Jones Creek. And as we can see from the sign on the fence, there are potentially gopher tortoises here. So maybe we'll be lucky and see some today. So let's go take a walk. So let's talk about what makes this property unique. For one, it could have been a car dealership. This property was owned by a car dealer for many, many years. And it was always their dream to put another dealership right here on Indian Town Road. But the town was able through the processes that Gretchen mentioned to purchase this property in conjunction with the county and put it into preservation status. Now what else makes this property unique? Well, it's a home for urban wildlife. I've seen hawks. There's a woodpecker here on this pine tree right now. Cardinals, gopher tortoises. And there are actually four unique ecosystems on this property as well. Another great aspect of this particular property is that it also is alongside Jones Creek, adding yet another layer of protection to one of the tributaries that feeds the Loxahatchee River. So again, the Pine Flatwoods community, a mixture of slash pine, saw palmetto, other plants such as this one with the orangish leaves here is called Rusty Lionia. There are other plants in here, a like gallberry. The tall grasses you can see in the distance are broom sedge, an andropogon species. We've got a lot of native vines. This one's smilax. called Smilax. And we're professionals. I don't recommend you try this. But if you know how to properly identify this vine, it's actually edible. He's kind of like asparagus. I don't know if you want to throw that on the grill with your steak, but it's actually not bad if you were in a survival situation. Now up ahead, you can see one of the other unique habitats. This is a cypress swamp, which is different from a cypress slough because through the swamp, there's no wa uh, water flow through the swamp. It's just a low area where cypress trees are growing. A cypress slough is different because it actually transports water from one location to another as part of a larger watershed system. Just want to point out down here with the cypress trees, you see all these kind of knobs sticking up out of the water. Those are called knees. Those are part of the root system of the cypress and allow it to access oxygen. Right now we're entering the third type of habitat on this particular property. Sand pine scrub or Florida scrub as some people call it. You can see the sand pines which are unique to this type of habitat. This is very indicative of higher ground well-drained sandy soils. These types of pines are easily identified because they have very small pine cones and short needles. They look a little bit more like a, uh, a western pinion pine than they do the majority of the longleaf pines that you see growing in Florida. Other plants native to this community, saw palmetto again, and numerous species of oaks. You have sand live oak, Myrtle Oak, Chapman Oak, and all of those grow in areas like this that are higher than the surrounding ground and have very sandy, well-drained soils. 
Now another interesting fact about this, this is the most rare type of habitat in South Florida and one of the more rare types of habitat in the state. In the past, before development, these areas were concentrated in South Florida along the coastal dune system just inland of what's now the Intracoastal Waterway. Other areas in Florida that contain this type of habitat are the Ocala National Forest over in Highlands County and South Central Florida and then up in the Panhandle region. And there are a few different species of wildlife that call scrub habitat home. There is actually a scrub lizard, which is a small lizard, almost like a skink with bright blue scales along its side. Gopher tortoise live in the scrub habitat. And there aren't very many around anymore, but a particular species of bird called the scrub jay calls scrub habitat home. Here we have the fruiting structures of the saw palmetto. And these will eventually turn into a series of berries saw palmetto berries and this is now a protected species for being commercially exploited people come in and harvest the berries for use in the alternative healing and natural medicines market so if you see somebody out in one of our natural areas harvesting berries and kindly let them know that's a no-no uh, you do need to get a state permit in order to do it you need to obtain landowner permission there's a whole process and procedure of paperwork uh, due to the over-harvesting commercial exploitation of saw palmetto berries. So here we are walking along the east side of Cinquez Park, heading north towards the natural area. And these areas of vegetation were preserved in place when the property was developed. This is native vegetation. This property did have quite the amount of exotic invasive vegetation present when the property was acquired and underwent a large cleanup. It was inundated with Melaleuca, which has since been removed. We're over here on the north side of the property now on the back of the natural area. And as you can see, this area is pretty heavily planted. Now, Gretchen mentioned earlier that prior to the development of this site into the beautiful park that you see now, it was covered with exotics. And I can't remember the exact figure, but there were tons and tons of exotic plants that were removed from this site and hauled away, in addition to literally decades worth of trash, including refrigerators, air conditioning units, old cars, just about anything you can imagine. So all of that stuff was cleaned out. What was left were some of the larger trees that had never been removed on this back portion of the site, along with a few scattered oaks and pines and other parts of the property. Sean worked with students and organized a big planting effort. And most of what you see growing underneath the pines was planted as part of that project. And so what was a site that was heavily impacted with exotic vegetation and illegal dumping in the middle of the town has now been turned into a beautiful park that people are enjoying and using uh, and it even has its own open space uh, and natural area on the north end that people can come and enjoy a little bit of uh, privacy a little bit of nature right here in the middle of jupiter so we are still at Cinquez park but behind me you can see this massive ficus tree this tree is so old didn't even know it was on this property. It was, this property was so packed full of invasive exotics. Couldn't even see this giant tree here until we started removing all that material and found it. And what we've learned is this tree has been on the property. There are actually two of them from our understanding way back in the day. This place used to have some sort of club or bar at the tree and it was quite the hangout spot. But this massive tree is located towards the south side near the dog park area and the restroom facilities. Mm -hmm. 